Hello and welcome to Salty Duck Studios post-mortem video for our Full Sail University Bachelors of Game Design capstone project, Frickin' the Laser Shark. Frickin' the Laser Shark is a 2D bullet hell underwater platformer hybrid. In this game, the player controls Frickin', a shark with a laser on its head, guiding it through eight stages filled with various armed aquatic life the player will blast, dash, and crash their way through each world and face four bosses total in the game as they make their way to the end. Frickin' was originally pitched as an open world game where all the bosses were on one large map, but we changed to a stage and world based system because it held true to the retro 90s shoot 'em up feeling that we wanted to convey and it was far more feasible given the short amount of time we had to finish this project. The game features horizontal and vertical movement with angular drag and a negative y-axis gravity pull as it is an underwater platformer. This movement has a catch though. Because the player is playing as a shark, they must stay in constant motion or they will lose health. Speaking of our health system, it is an upgradable health system where the player must collect four heart pieces in the game to increase their total health. We have four different lasers that the player can use. The standard single fire red laser, a shotgun like yellow laser, a green three shot burst laser, and a Mega Man style purple charge laser. Each of these lasers except for the red laser has a limited number of ammo. Ammo collectibles must be found in the game to replenish player ammo stock. We also have collectible shark teeth the player can collect. If the player collects 100 teeth, they earn an extra life. Our lives system in place is similar to classic 2D platformers from the 90s. So once all lives are exhausted, they get a game over screen and must start the game from the beginning. We have a loot drop system in place to provide the player ways to earn these collectibles from defeating enemies and destroying treasure chests. Another mechanic we use is lock and key to keep the player from skipping certain areas by placing doors that have a specific kill or collect requirement for the player to progress. We all did very well with planning during development because our producer introduced us to this organizing app called Hack and Plan. This app helped us keep an agile methodology for our development. Also, we had weekly stand-ups, time boxes for tasks, and role interchangeability for each member of the team as well to keep with the agile mindset. Something great about this team is the chemistry we all had with each other when an idea was presented. The feedback for it was always honest and respectful. We constantly made sure every major change was voted for by every member of the team and even if there was only one person against the idea, we would hear out both sides of the debate then find a compromise everyone could agree with. Every member of this team has grown their skill sets exponentially from working on this project. We've learned how to develop advanced 2D player movement, projectile systems, balance level design, game managers, music managers, respawn systems, procedural generation, loot tables, mini maps, and much more. As a whole, every member of the team has become a better programmer and game designer from this experience, and we all plan to work and grow together even more in the future. One idea that was nixed early in development was to have branch and pass in our levels. We wanted to place higher difficulty enemies and hazards at lower pass, but the common result from testing turned into those paths being ignored altogether. We also had a pickup for an extra life fully functioning, but we noticed that the pickup created scenarios where the player could have 30 plus lives. The team thought that that was far too many for the player to have and keep the gameplay balanced. So we removed the pickup entirely. The game in its current state is a much more fleshed out and complete idea than we started with. The team has done a wonderful job working together to iterate, improve, and implement the core ideas of the original pitch. The project has made improvements over the short amount of time we worked on it, and I believe it has the potential to be something great if the right amount of hard work and dedication is implemented. We made sure to keep humor as a major theme of our game, with plenty of clever enemies and naming conventions in this title. We even wanted to make death and the credits entertaining. Thank you all for taking the time to watch this video, and make sure to keep your eyes on Steam this winter for a game about a frickin' shark with a frickin' laser beam attached to his head. Thank you.